Hey, how's it going? <clears throat> um, my name's Kyle Sullivan, and uh, today is my first day of sobriety. Um, and I guess I'm just making this uh, <clears throat> video kind of as almost a confession for myself and just putting everything out there into the world in the form of talking so I know it's real. Um, yeah, I, I'm an alcoholic and I have not admitted that to myself for a long time. Um, I think, I think I knew for maybe the past couple of years, past like, since I was probably like 21, I, I figured I must be an alcoholic, but it was something that I would always deal with later. I think in the back of my mind, I, there was always a point in my life that I knew I would stop drinking or I wanted to stop drinking. It just wasn't yet. I, I just can't imagine sometimes, you know, never taking another drink, never, uh, drinking another one of my birthdays and my birthdays, um, in May, May 25th. And today it is April 2nd, uh, 2016 and I I woke up today after I had I drank last night and I had that same feeling of depression again where I I regret everything from the night before and I you know I'm risking getting another DUI and I already have two if I get another one I go to I go to prison so it's it's insane because I, I know I'm, I'm a fairly intelligent individual and I know the risks. And when I'm sober, <clears throat> it, it like scares me to think that I could even be possible of putting myself in that situation again. But the second I get a couple beers in me, it's, I mean, all it takes honestly is a four ounce sip of beer just to get the ball rolling. I get that little bit of a buzz and then that just grows getting more and more alcohol and making worse and worse deci uh, decisions. And I've taken periods of time off from drinking before. Um, and even, even when I do that, you know, the first, the first couple days are the hardest and then you get into a rhythm and you start, you know, like for me, it was going to the gym and reading and just focusing on making money, staying on ahead of my, staying ahead of uh, my bills. So that that was taking up a lot of the time that I would spend drinking instead. Um, but being around a lot of people that drink and knowing what it's like to drink, eventually I would always come back to wanting to just you know have have a beer, just like have one beer. And that's how it always started when I started drinking again. I would do good if it was maybe even only for a couple of days, I would drink what I consider to be normal. You know, I'd have one beer and I'd have a glass of water with it and I would leave, but it was almost to prove to myself, see, I can do it. So since I can do that, now I can drink more. <clears throat> and it was never that I just <coughs> wanted to have one. I wanted to, I wanted to just keep drinking continually, always, always drinking. And there was, there's the... The point that I say, God, I'm, I'm too drunk, it, it's, I will say I used to black out a lot more um, when I was younger, especially when I was drinking liquor, um, and maybe my tolerance has kind of gotten higher as well, but uh, it's, it's definitely, a, it just takes control of my life. And I'm going to miss it in the beginning. But uh, I think what I was getting at with that was the times that I have taken off for that, that brief period of actual true sobriety, I experience actual happiness from inside myself. I not, not of a, a window of inebriated happiness where when I'm, when I'm drinking, that's, that's all I care about is, is in that moment 
when I'm sitting at the bar talking to people, you know, I, I forget everything else because I'm drunk and I, I have a buzz going on. That's all I care about in that moment. I don't care that I'm spending money that I shouldn't be spending. I don't care that I'm eating whatever kind of food for me. I don't care that I drove and I know I'm not taking an an Uber home because then I'd have to come back tomorrow and get my car. Wouldn't that be the worst thing in the world? And I risk getting another DUI when I know what the consequences are and it's pure insanity to me to think that I would even risk that again. And it's just about that moment. But when I'm sober, I'm just happy all the way around. I don't deal with, I don't deal with depression when I don't drink and then I get better and then I think I can drink again. But that's, that's the alcoholic part of my mind that comes back in and says, see, you're doing good. You learned. So now you know how to go back and just, you know, have a couple because it always, it always, uh, sells it to you like that in the beginning. Like, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, man. Like, oh, we got to cool it on the drinking. Well, you can have one knowing, fully knowing that, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to where we were before. Don't worry. It, it really feels like I've, I've had two people living inside of me, like a Dr. Jekyll, and Mr. Hyde, like who I am, who Kyle Sullivan is, is a motivated individual, uh, that loves life, enjoys hiking, enjoys, uh, weight training and loves playing disc golf. Uh, I'm funny, I'm compassionate and I'm generous. I like to help people out and I'm loving and I'm loyal. The alcoholic (coughs) version of myself is none of those. He's a liar. He's a manipulator. He will do anything to get a drink. And he's crafty. He'll be drinking in front of you and you won't even know it. He can be drinking in the same room as you at the same time you're in it and you will not know that he has alcohol. I have surprised myself with my ingenuity and craftiness for just to get a drink and, and my resourcefulness to do it. I'm sorry. I'm kind of slurry right now. Cause I'm still just kind of waking up. And after I drink the night before I, I always, uh, wake up groggy and out of it. Um, and that's, I mean, that's kind of how I feel right now, but, uh, but I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that I made this decision. You can even see my eyes are all glossy right now from drinking. Um, but I finally, I woke up and I just said, this, this has got to be over. This cannot go on. And my dad's an alcoholic. Members of my family are alcoholics. I definitely think some genetics may play into it, but I've thought about it as well. Seeing growing up and seeing how my dad drank, that was that's how I thought people drank, and I never watched my dad drink responsibly. Every time he drank, he would get like an eighteen pack of Budweiser and get hammered and blare country music way too early in the morning, you know, like two in the morning, three in the morning, and I think that's part of the reason why I hate country music. And but he would <coughs> get so drunk, he'd throw up, yell, fight with my mom. You know, him and his drinking buddy, Bill, who's now dead, um, they would just get shithoused. That's just how they drink. And there's a window of time from when they start drinking to before they get horrible that everything's fun and lighthearted. And it's like, that's what you strive for every time. But when you're having fun, you just keep drinking. Next thing you know, you're like, and it. You don't have to be an angry drunk and you don't have to be a violent one, but it, I used to, I used to not get angry when I drink. I, I used to always, I proud it, pride myself on that. You know, it was like, yeah, I'm not an angry junk. I don't understand. Like you're drinking. Why aren't you happy? But when the, when the fun part of it goes away, when you realize it's just, you're drinking because you need to drink. You want to have a drink. You need to drink. That's when the anger part comes in. Because then when you don't get it, you're you're irritated. You're irritable. And I used to think when I'd be like, oh, if I go into work with a couple beers in me, like I'm more loose and 
I'll, I'll get better tips and I would tell myself that I do, but I am so sharp and so much smarter without it, you know, and I, I enjoy my work more. Um, I don't get mad at people as easy, but when I have a buzz on, especially when it starts wearing off, I'm just, I turn into a jerk. Like I get angry so easily and people have definitely said they're like, Oh, Kyle's kind of a hothead. And I don't want people to see that, but that's what I'm doing. I'm giving them that reason. So, and and it's only when I drink and I'm tired. I'm just like, I woke up just being tired of being this version of myself, just constantly worrying about how I'm going to get another drink. And there's so many days that I would wake up and say, I'm not going to drink today. Oh, I'm, I can't even believe I made it home safe in one piece I cannot drink today. And within five minutes, my brain is already processing, well, what are you going to drink today? And, you know, 15 minutes later, I'm at a liquor store buying alcohol or I'm sitting at a, at a tap room. And there's so many times when I'm, I'm always looking over my shoulder because my girlfriend fucking is the best. She's the best person that I've ever met in my entire life and has always believed in me and has stuck around and waited for me to get to this point. And we almost broke up one time. Um, and then we got back together under me saying, look, I want to be with you, but I want to be able to drink. And she was, that was one of the things is she said, you have to stop drinking. And she's just in love with me. And I love, and I'm in love with her. I love her so much that she's like, look, I, boy, um, that she would still rather be with the fucking broken version of me than not at all. And, um, but you know, so when I say I'm going to stop drinking, uh, I'm always thinking that she's going to walk in or something. And she has in the past, she's like, where are you? And you know, my car, my bike isn't there. And I'm like, Oh, I'm just around the corner. She's like, you're not inside this tap room right now. If I walk in, I'm not going to see you. And you know, I would, become upset because it feels like this person's like, you know, being my, my parent, like, like I, I didn't, I, it was a mat to mask, emasculating, um, because it, it felt like I couldn't just go do what I want. And that's why I would tell myself the alcoholic in my head would say like, who is she to tell you when you can and can't have a beer? You're a grown man. And it's just because she's always been the one to, to care about me and see that I'm just poisoning myself and ruining my life. And just wasting it. And I, I'm i not even really sure the, the, the true point of this video. Like I said, I feel like it, it's just kind of like I want to put things out there in the world. And just maybe look back on this video a year from now or something. And just see the difference um, that this decision uh, decision has made for me today. I truly believe that I've just saved my life because I, I'm that little brief window that I was sober. It was so weird. I didn't even remember what it was like to be sober. I was like, wait, how do I do this? Like, how do I not drink? How do I go places and not have alcohol? Um, but it, it, it's kind of insane to think that I've let it go on this long. I'm 27 right now. No, I'm 26. I will be 27 uh, May 25th. Um, and to let it, just to let it go on this long. Like, I, I've i dealt with that depression before. And to see, to have the answer, to see the answer <clears throat> staring me right in the face. And everyone around me saying, like, you know... Uh, you're, you drink a lot, you know, my go, like, oh, yeah, I just, I just like to drink and, you know, and a lot of, I will have to say uh, probably a lot of my friends have either alcoholic tendencies or they are alcoholics and they're just not getting to that point of telling themselves. And it's, it's not my place to tell anyone that they're an alcoholic or, or that they need to stop drinking because this is an internal decision. I've realized now there is no way 
no way to stop drinking unless you want to stop drinking. If you want to keep drinking, you're going to drink. I don't want to drink anymore. I, I know that the alcoholic in me wants to get out and he knows that right now it's a ticking, it's just ticking down the life and the size of him, but it'll never go away. That's, that's the thing that, that window of sobriety taught me is that he can get small and so quiet that you don't, you don't even feel like he's there. You think that maybe he left, but he never does. He'll always be waiting for you just to have that one sip and to just start back up again. And that's the thing is that it, it just takes a, a fucking drop and it just boom, breathes them back to life. And in the, in the process continues again until I reach back to the point where I'm like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm, I'm tired of this depression. And then he goes, okay, well, I know you don't feel good. Here's a drink. And it's, it's got to end. Um, I, <sighs> it, it's kind of scary because I feel like I want, I want to believe that this is going to be easy for me. And I know right now in this, this moment, I'm happy that I, that I'm doing this. This is the first time I've ever really committed to admitting I'm an alcoholic though. I've take, I've taken time off from drinking before and, uh, you know, just to say like, Oh, I'm just taking a break. And I, you'd lie to everyone and say, yeah, you know, it's just good to take a break every once in a while, blah, blah, blah. But really it's just because you drink so much that you're putting your life in, in jeopardy and you're having to wait uh, a short period of time to try to convince people. Oh, hold on. Jenica's going. 